back to 2016. Scott for my six blades in his lovely Moldy garage. So moving on with various projects within the, uh, the workshop. Um, what I thought I'd tackle today is the next stage of the build of one of my knives, which in this example is a Merlin variant called the Galahad, of which that's it, and this is for Ant. Um, I, we sort of agreed on skeletal, but what I'm going to do is, as it's an example, it's got to be scales on it. Tough. All right, so that is the stage that it is at the moment, which is uh, a core script that's got as flat as possible. Um, I'm not too worried about the finish at that point because then when I put the bevel on, okay, I've got it flat so it sits in the jig straight. I set the bevel so I get the same angle on both sides and I get an edge on it. Okay, I'm not too worried about if there's a slight burr, I know I've got to an edge. Now, what I'm interested in now is, is getting the sides finished so I can put my um, logo on. So basically the next stage is hand finishing. Um, now there's, there's, there's one of these wide open sort of phrases. Hand finished. Okay now hand finished goes from uh, the hand built wooden carriage horse drawn and the wheels are hand finished with the lines you know the guy's used a long bristle brush and he's put all the beautiful lines hand finished handmade bicycle and it's all lime painted and it's all hand finished. There's also donuts in Tesco. They're hand finished. Okay. Just because you've got these these labels, um, it gives you a clue as to how much skill and dedication is imparted to it. But it but it's 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 it's, it's quite a large arena as it were. So for all the guys who do knives in England and around the world like this and we're hand finishing the flats in order to put a logo on or stamp or whatever it's, it's quite there's quite a lot of attention in there because as you work through the grits you've got to go past the point where the scales are going to be which stops right about there on the knife blade once those scales go on you're not going to get into that corner with much ease you can do it but it's, it, you need to get this section done now before the scales go on. You go past the section, but there's no there's no point finishing up there because you want this coarse and gritty and, and a lot of key for the glue glue in the scales on. So you're going past, you're going over the tip, but not rounding it off because you'll upset your bevel, and you're going backwards and forwards as flat as you can. There's a lot of movements where you go backwards and forwards and you can go sort of diagonally and slant in order to just blur and even up the grain pattern. Um, but I like transiting, so I'm, I'm going backwards and forwards and a slight movement of, of the, the beam or a piece of metal or a piece of hardwood you're going to use um, with the abrasive underneath. If you use your fingers, if you use your hand or if you use a sponge, you're just going to get that going on. What we want is we want it flat. So what we've got, I can use a piece of 01 stock. Um, I quite like to use a really hard piece of hardwood because the, the grit will we're going to lose a little bit of flatness anyway. But it's it's so it's so uniform. This this piece of hardwood, it gets a really good finish. And then at the end, I've got a lever section on the other end there. And I, I do the uh, the finer grits with a lever section on this block of wood I've got for hand finishing. So basically, it's just a tedious way of going backwards and forwards. This then gets the uh, high satin finish that I can then degrease, take inside, and then put the, the logo on. I use an etch uh, stencil, uh, and then we'll, we'll tackle that later. But that's basically, I get this clean. And to a point where it's the same finish as what the end is going to be. So when I've done the etch, and you end up with all the, the black acid burny effect, when you when you finish that off, you'll end up using the same finish you did before you got there. So you're not changing the grit of the other side you want me to touch. Anyway, so I'm going to set myself up and do some hand job finishing. A bit more than a donut racing in a cake shop. 
tips and tricks. Now there was a story um, that was told by Trenton Ty of Purgatory Ironworks. And it's one of them things that makes little metally worky people like me have a little bit of a chuckle. Um, um, one of the tasks of a uh, blacksmith is when you use your chisel when the metal is warm and what you're trying to do is you're trying to split the metal so you're, you're making a hinge for the side of a door so you're splitting the metal like a tree in order to scroll all those around so you get all those beautiful tree patterns on hinges on doors you use a chisel because you're going to split the metal rather than um, an angle grinder which just kicks dust around um, and, and removes metal the idea being that you know the, the skill is is knowing where to hit and split and how and far where to stop and all the rest of it. So of course Trenton was um, asking his mentor and his trainer, the guy who was, who was tuning under or apprenticing under, um, oh, you got to show me one day how you know about using the chisel or in order, in order to, to get the split right when when you when you're you're cutting the metal. Oh yeah, I'll show you one day. And it's, it's, it's a it's a real secret, my. You know, you, you know, you'd have to get up through the levels because I'll do it. It'd just be beyond you, or something. So anyway, after weeks and weeks of going, well, I, I, could you could you could you show me how you do it? Because yeah, he was struggling and it was just never going right, or he, he was moving it and it was just too much on one side, or he'd gone too far. And okay. so um, eventually the, the guy said, "Okay, I'll show you." So we took the piece of metal. Let's, let's have a look, let's have a look, preparedness as ever, right? So, so here's the piece of metal, uh, uh, and he started going like this. Didn't even put it in the fire, really. And um, he had all these funny movements, and he just walked straight over to the bandsaw. Turned the bandsaw on and went, <laughs> and, and that was his way of putting his splits in his metal. It was, it was even, it was neat, and it was straight. He never used the chisel, of course. So, when you get your full pack of abrasives, and you want to cut them into neat uh, squares in order to get, you've still got the same series all the way through, and it all stays together, one neat series of 100 to 1200, okay, the grit. I've got the series going through. How, how do you manage to get them so they're all the same without taking them apart and cutting them with scissors? It's the magic moment. First of all, put a fold in it. So you can see what you're doing. your little book of graded abrasives that run from for me it's 100 to 1200 and that's that's plenty for hand finishing I've got micro mesh which takes me up to 2000 if I wanted to go on further on another stage but this is plenty good stuff for doing um, this now a hundred is, is quite chunky um, on there and I don't want to remove too much metal so I'm gonna miss that one out and I'm gonna go to 120 which is the same belt as what I would use if I was on the second stage anyway because my belts are 120 so I set up the series over there so I'm literally taking taking the grit as I'm going the 120 goes on the that block I've got you can use belts but the, I've got Y backed I do, I do a tree, uh, little bit of a, an idea on uh, the, the backing material this and this is quite stiff because this is this a, a belt for going around a machine, so I find wires are too stiff really for using on there. So I've managed to clamp that on there on the big old stage of my machine. Big stage, guys, big stage, big work rest. A dash of the old SWW do. Um, the, the beauty of this is the point's not over the end, so no one's going to catch themselves if, if jazz popped in. If, not knowing it was on there 
there's nothing stuck out and literally find the level and now I am removing the greatest scratches that was on there from the 36 belt I'm not trying to remove material, I'm just trying to remove the scratches. If I really put it on there, yeah, okay, but I'll be moving more steel than I need to. Sometimes you just want better music, don't you? 